Hello world, this is Craig. Say for a while now I've had a hankering to play with just a very basic single board computer based on the 8085. And I decided to uh, go ahead and design one, lay it out, and have some boards made. So this is uh, what I've got. It just came in the mail yesterday, so starting to look at putting it together. And what this board has on it is a 8085 and an 8155. The 8155 is a uh, companion to the 8085. It's part of the MCS 80 original set. It has got, uh, let's see, about 22 bits of I.O. It's got a 2 kilobit RAM, and then it has a timer. And then I have space here for two 2732E proms. This one is meant to be socketed, and this one I have room here to put it in a ZIF socket. And then I wanted some more RAM, so I put in a 6264, which is a uh, 64 kilobit RAM, so I've got 8K by 8 of the uh, RAM available. Put a MAX 232 and a serial port on it, running off of the SID and SOD line, so I can hang this on and have a simple monitor for it. And the rest of this, these other three chips are just glue. So, uh, and I have an I.O. up here for the, tw the 8155, some I.O. And that's about it. I tried to make this board as simple as I could. There's no user option decoding. Basically, the memory starts at 0, 0 and goes on up from there. Uh, everything has a, a predefined memory address. I did want to put a bus on it or an expansion on it. So I have a uh, expansion fingers down here that bring out basically all of the signals from the 8085 as well as the full latched address and puts it onto a little backplane bus here. And in the next the next uh, round of cards that I get, I'm gonna uh, I have a backplane for this a little four slot backplane that I'm going to. Uh, make so I can expand this. This is just a PCI connector down here at the bottom. So these are available, you know, for a dollar or two. Uh, so easily, easily expanded. My, I, my whole idea was to go after, you know, making this very, very low cost. You know, you can get an 80, 85 for, you know, five dollars for a plastic version. You can get about the same for 81.55. Of course, the the 2732s uh, cost almost nothing. The 6264 is probably you know the more most expensive. I guess it's probably going to be a few dollars on it, and then a little bit of glue logic here. The Max 232 uh, and the connectors. But you know the connectors. This this connector I did put a fuse on it to protect it. Uh, this is a barrel connector for power to coming in, but it puts power on the bus. I did put a fuse and a little uh, reverse bias diode here to protect in case uh, somebody tries to put reverse power in it. And, you know, simple things like those components wind up costing more than the board itself. So I'll be back when I start to get this populated. I'm going to, you know, take my time and savor the population of it. Uh, it's kind of fun to, uh, to, you know, populate it little bits at a time and then play with it and see what all it can do with just a few components. So I'll, I'll start doing that and I'll come back when I get some more, when, well, when I get it going I, at least. All right, so that's it for now, and I'll continue this when when I have something to show. I'm back with my little SBC85 board, and this is as minimum as it can be uh, populated and still operate. What I have installed is the 8085. It's crystal. I put in the full little uh, restart here to bring the restart up slowly, restart button, and the power inlet, uh, power LED. There's a few resistors here, and also I, I do have uh, some surface mount resistors on the back that are used to pull things like the ready line and the interrupt uh, request line and so forth uh, so that this, this processor will start. So this is basically the minimum system. I fired this up. Uh, I have a little bit of test code in here that simply does a toggle on the sod. So it, it toggles, toggles the sod. Uh, half a dozen times and then it pauses and toggles it again so I can put the the uh, logic probe on this and watch that happen so I know I'm fetching good instructions and I'm uh, uh, executing those. So, so far so good. Uh, I'm not sure I mentioned that this is the address latch here. So this is pretty much the minimum system. I had to have the address decoder to read the base address in this 
EEPROM. What I'm going to do now is, uh, since I know this is working, I think I'll populate the ZIF socket next, and I'll put some code in this that just immediately bumps it up and starts running into the ZIF socket, which starts at uh, uh, 1000. So that'll just make it easier to, when I'm working on the code, uh, so I can just use that ZIF socket instead of instead of having to work it in that socket. So I think the next things I'll populate are the ZIF socket and uh, probably the 8155. To populate the 8155, I have to populate, uh, actually to populate anybody next, I have to populate some of the glue logic because this glue has the address decoding on it. And there's an address decoder here for the 8155. So I'll think about it today, see what I'm going to populate if I populate the ZIF or the 8155 or the bigger RAM or the serial port. Uh, basically, so that's an update on this. So far, so good. And it's uh, it's fun. I just And it's fun to just populate little bits and then play with the board and populate some more little bits and play with it some more. I'll give you another update after I get some more of it populated, some more things running. And hopefully I don't find any major flaws in the board design. All right, talk with you later. Hello world, I'm back. Okay, the next step I did was I decided to go ahead and put the ZIF socket in so I could have the second 2732. And because now I had two of the 2732s, I had to put in the address decoding. Uh, if you only have one 2732 by itself, its chip enable will float active. So uh, in this case, it'll go low. Uh, so it'll enable itself, which is why the last time I didn't need to have any of the logic chips in. But now that I've got two of them, they would both float uh, active, which is, again, uh, zero ground. So I had to put the logic in. So I put the logic in. I just put a little short program in the base one now that tells it to jump up to 1000, which is uh, the expansion one in the ZIF socket. And uh, then... Now I have the code that I had before, which just toggles the sod line. So, so far, so good. No problems. Uh, the last things to put in, this is the RAM. This is the MAX 232 and the socket for that and the 8155. Oh, I also started to see some glitching come in. And so I put my decoupling capacitors in uh, just a, a bunch of... Uh, uh, you know, one microfarad tantalums and 0.1 uh, ceramics. And that took care of that, that glitchy that I was starting to get in. So now I think I'll put the serial port on so I can actually start talking to this with a, uh, with a terminal. And then I'll finish up with the other two chips. So I'll probably actually just socket those. It's not that much to socket those. Uh, in terms of, this, you know, at this point, I've got enough invested in this board that I'm going to make a patch to it rather than just throw it away if something's wrong with it because I've got the ZIF socket mounted and enough stuff mounted that the board's uh, worth rescuing now rather than just trashing it if there was something major wrong with it. So I'll go ahead and populate uh, these two sockets and the 232 so I can get a serial port, and then I think everything will be populated except for I do have a diode here as part of a little a little uh, protection circuit that uh, in case somebody connected the power supply backwards but I know my power supply is okay so I'm not too worried about that diode in this yet and I'll mount my uh, little expansion header up here make sure that it clears that handle for the ZIF socket so far everything looks like it's going pretty good and uh, pretty happy with it Alrighty, I'll be back later. Hello world, this is Craig. Well, I finished up everything on this board and I found that I had made, I think, probably three mistakes on this. One of them is that when I was laying it out, I had specified a female connector for the serial, but when I actually grabbed the footprint, I grabbed the male. So this has pins, so that means that uh, I need to use a gender bender on this if I want to plug the RS-232 converter directly into that. So on the next revision, I need to change this over to a uh, female. And, of course, you can't just swap these out because they're mirrored images of them. You know, pin one on, is a one on one side, and that's pin five on the other, on the other gender. I'm going to redo that, and also while I'm at that, I'm going to move the power connector up a little bit, this little barrel connector, move it a little further away so I have more room for, uh, I can actually plug the, uh, USB 
adapter right into this. If I'm using a terminal and just a serial cable, it works fine, but my USB adapter is a little bit bigger. Other thing I decided to do was make my reset switch a little bit smaller. I moved the header for the 8155IO down. And uh, probably the biggest bonehead mistake I made was on the address decoder for the 8155. I had written on the schematic what I wanted to do for the addressing. And then I got in a role doing the schematic for the address lines. And I connected three too many address lines. So three of the address lines, I had to cut the traces and put little jumpers to uh, uh, get rid of those. So you can see here in three places, I had to cut it and then take those three jumpers to ground. So not a major, not a major problem. But other than that, the board fired up. Uh, I right now have everything running fine. I've checked all the output ports and the input ports. The 8155, I'll do a video on that. But basically, it's got two 8-bit ports that can either be all out or all in. And then it has a 6-bit port that can either be all out or all in. Or it can be used as part of the handshaking for the two 8-bit ports. It also has a timer uh on board. And in this board, the the uh, input to that timer is just the clock from the microprocessor. The RAM is working fine. I, I have my confidence test running on this. And so I've done uh, tests on my RAM. I've done my import output tests. I've done tests on the EEPROMs and uh, the IO ports and everything seems to be working just fine. So it remains to be a very cute little, uh, you know, very functional board. Again, we've got you know 64 kilobits of RAM there, and then we've got two kilobits of RAM there, and two of the 2732 EEPROMs. So nice room for programming, and you know a simple, good board. Uh, and then we have the expansion bus for anything else. That's this little SBC85, and it is proven to be a really fun little board to play with. And despite its little mistakes that I have to do on the next version, uh, there's there's still lots of fun to be had with this. So I do have four more boards that I'm not going to put together. They need to be mod. They need to have a little mods done. And the mods again are you have to cut these three little traces here and jump them to the pin just adjacent, which happens to be a ground. Second thing isn't really a mod, but you have to use a gender bender to change this male to a female. Uh, to go directly into a, a terminal or in a, uh, a USB adapter. But at any rate, with these four boards, if there's four people out there that want a board, I'll send them to them. If they just send me a self-addressed envelope, if they pay for the shipping, I'll give them the board. So what we'll do is if uh, any of my subscribers want a board, if they could leave a comment below uh, to get in the queue in the, in the right order, and then I'll reply with an email that they can just send contact information to or uh, just, just to basically claim it. And then they can send me a self-addressed dumped envelope. I'll, I'll get it all together and weigh it and see how much it's going to cost to mail it. Or you can just uh, you know PayPal me the $2.50 or whatever it's going to cost to mail these. But if you want one of these boards, just let me know uh, below. And then I'm going to go off and make the next revision of this. And I might do a couple of videos on some other things on this board, like the 8155, uh, using the timer and the ports. So if you want one of the bare boards, let me know. And I appreciate you watching the video, and I will talk with you later. Bye-bye.